right so okay the event's done let's see i probably continue that the main quest let's see okay that's done okay 32 days still but i'm gonna probably complete that soon I that I'll have to check eleven days. Mm. Uh, those here. Mm, eleven days. Mm. Yeah, so actually, I should check those first. Yeah. Let's, let me check here first. I want to see that that I haven't yet. Uh, not for figure death, but there are but an omen of coming glory. Yeah, think for help. Move on the hidden nation. Conflict. Ah, okay. Tremble. Ah, try the reputations here. And. Okay, there will be back to one. Ah, that thing there. All right, so you know the way I'm playing, it will probably take longer for me to get there. Yeah, I better complete those before. Yeah, let's check those then see how those quests go. Let me just see. Mm. Every okay, journey so... has its final day. Tush. What greater pleasure is there than the unexpected? No sorry I'm wrong. Should give me a lift? Oh okay, so the other wind up pretty close. They try to bite us. Well, they're so cute. They probably won't do that. They probably right? will. Huh? What's happening over there? Help oh, us. Nice. Somebody help us! Ah! Wild coalosaurs are actually biting people. It's time for save the day again. Seems those pictures we wanted will have to wait. Yeah, those two are in trouble. Legendary Traveler and his trusty sidekick Paimon will not stand by idly! Go searching for the mysterious island. Ah, the island there. Can I just do that? Finally, someone's coming. Please help us. Yeah. <laughs> the defeated colors are scary. Uh, you must be scholars from Sumeru, right? Yes. 
I'm Karya, and this is my senior Baramdra. Thank you so much for saving us. That was a little too close. Don't mention it! Handling these sort of things is practically second nature to us by now. Uh, Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler! Still, it seems that all the Koholosaurs just ran off. We need to capture at least one alive. Uh, I was capture, actually capture one alive? One. Correct. Say, I can see you are very skilled at dealing with them. Do you think you could use me as live bait to help us <laughs> capture one? I will pay you for the effort. Uh, well... Apologies. Varamdra has been hyper-focused on his research. So please, don't be too hard on him. Oh, no worries. But why did you approach a whole group of wild Koholosaurs and what's this talk about capturing them? Don't tell me once you get a picture of them too. Uh, Paimon's pretty sure that's not what they're trying to do. I'm sure we must look very silly. The fact of the matter is that we're searching for a mysterious island from a certain legend. It's said that a very important clue about the island can be found on Koholosaurus, so... Approaching them without the help of a guide from the people of the springs was certainly an unwise choice on our part. A mysterious island? Yes. There is a legend from the people of the springs that mentions a mysterious island. And Vranja believes the key to his research can be found there. <clears throat> Are you certain you two won't consider my proposal to capture one? Some proposal? There's no way we'd be willing to use a person as live bait! Then I suppose discussing it any further will just be a waste of time. I must come up with another solution. <clears throat> For Ramtra. Oh, all right. You did rescue Karia and I just now, and I suppose I should express some gratitude. Thank you very much. A little awkward, but Paimon will take it. We should move on, Karia. Well, we could bring the Koholosaurus easily. Yes. Thank you again. My apologies. Brumja really doesn't have the best people skills. That's alright. You really don't see a pair of adventurers like those two every day. But anyway, Paimon's really curious about that mysterious island that lady just mentioned. You wanna find the island too, Paimon? Yeah, who knows? There might be treasure! After all, the amazing places we've explored during our adventures, finding some mysterious island should be a walk in the park for us! We don't have any info about this island. Oh, you're right. The lady mentioned that the mysterious island is related to a legend of the people of the springs. So maybe we can start by asking some of them about it! Time's ticking, let's get started on our next adventure! But the real question is, who should we ask? Can we just talk to the chief? Hmm, that's an idea. If anyone, the chief of the tribe should know the details! Huh, just that was the one. Oh, there's two around here. Okay, no. No, let me just check here how is this. Ah, it was just that first part. Okay. Oh, why? This one. I should get a Molan for free. Okay. Yeah, but if there's a Molan for free there, isn't that kind? Okay, I can get more, but my point is usually should get new characters. Oh. 
come on. What the heck's that? Oh! I can talk to them. She's not a starling like us. She can breathe on the water and she can and she has two stubby horns. She's also wearing clothes and can speak the language of humans. She also won't let me drink the hot springs water. But why? So I can talk to them while I'm on a sorry. Confused looking in Kohalasar, there must be many questions like you like to ask. Cool! You can just drink this water whatever you want, it doesn't matter if you're sorry or very good at swimming. Hot spring water is not suitable for drinking. I'll keep that in mind. See, the turtler agrees. I recorded my experiences here and sent them back by mail. In his reply, Mosunov let urge me to wait for the hot spring water to cool before tasting for myself. I mean, it depends how hot it is. You... Come on, you should have a good notion if it's okay. They probably had... Man, I probably had tea or coffee at Fontaine. But most of knowledge, why would anyone want to taste hot spring water at all? Ah, <laughs> oh, they have things here as well. Ah, oh, no, it's just the performance. I thought maybe somebody would do some stuff wrong here. Help with anything? We want to visit the mysterious island. Hmm, the mysterious island, huh? Um, is there something wrong? I'm assuming you two are already aware that this island is related to a legend of my people. Yeah, and I'll probably get that as a thumbnail. Now that you mention it, we don't know anything about the actual legend yet. <laughs> then allow me to explain it to you two. It is said that the first chief of the people of the Springs was the most outstanding guide in all of Natlan. He discovered many deserted domains and found countless treasures. But to prove himself once more, he embarked on yet another journey in search of a legendary, mysterious island. He endured many hardships along the way, but he persevered and managed to reach the destination. The island emits a golden light where countless treasures are buried. But instead of claiming the treasures for himself, he left behind a trail of clues that lead to the island. Since then, many people from later generations have undertaken the challenge of finding the island. After all, to find the island is to find riches and glory. Oh, that makes sense! So could you tell us how to get to that island? It doesn't know. Oh, mm. oh Paimon 
everyone gets it. This is like a big secret for the people of the spring, so you can't just tell anyone, right? On the contrary, it's quite the opposite. The legend and the clues needed to find the island are all already known to the public. Hmm. Oh! Well, then what's the problem? Well, I'm willing to answer your question in exchange for a favor. What do you think? Sure thing! But what do you need us to do? <laughs> then you have my thanks. Allow me to tell you some details. I'll be honest, there are some among the tribe who are of rather... base character. Not long ago, I received a report that a few of them were working together to scam visitors. Hmm. As the chief of the tribe, I was very ashamed to hear of this. It's really hard to believe that could happen. They are targeting tourists who wish to visit that island. According to my sources, they would trick tourists into believing they are trustworthy guides before luring the tourists into spending a fortune for the sake of reaching the island. They run a pretty sophisticated operation. They would always claim the scammed money is some kind of legal travel expenditure, so it's hard to use that to directly convict them. So, I was hoping to find someone who could approach them and pretend to get scammed. Doing so would allow us to gather the evidence required to bring them to justice. The problem is, they would certainly recognize anyone associated with me, which is why I haven't been able to carry out the plan yet. Oh, Paimon understands now! We're the perfect bait because we're both tourists. Exactly! And as far as I know, you two are no pushovers. No matter what nefarious schemes they may come up with, you'll be perfectly capable of protecting yourselves, right? You betcha! If it's just a few scammers we're talking about, he'll take them all down! <laughs> Wonderful! Then here, please take this. Hmm. But if you already know us that well, wouldn't the scammers notice us at the Whoa, least? Whoa, uh, that's a lot of mora! Did we already earn a bonus? There will be plenty of rewards if you manage to catch those scoundrels. This mora, however, is for other purposes. I'm sure some spending will be required on your part before they lower their guard. I certainly wouldn't expect you to pay out of your own pockets. So please use the mora as needed, and collect as much evidence as possible. No wonder you're the chief. Seems like you've already thought of everything. Okay. We'll take it from here! <laughs> I've marked the location of the scammers on your map. I'll leave the rest to you two. Oh nice! Best quest like that. Please remember, we need concrete evidence. I'm counting on you! But... Yeah, it doesn't feel like I would get to the islands in another short dialogue like that. We should pretend we are innocent tourists with no idea about what's going on. Uh, but how should we lure those scammers out? Try talking about the mysterious island? Good idea! Speaking of which, Paimon's dying to know what kind of treasures could be buried on the mysterious island. Wonder if anyone's ever really seen them before! Ah! Are you two visitors from afar looking to visit the mysterious island? Who the... Oh, looks like we managed to lure them out already. Come on, Paimon, don't forget your rose. <clears throat> oh, pardon, is something the matter? 
I just happened to overhear you two talking about the mysterious island. I assume you two must be tourists, brought here by the legend and looking for the island. Am I right? Hello, Paimon is Paimon and this is the Traveler. That's right, we were just getting ready to look for that island from the legend. In that case, as a qualified guide, I certainly cannot allow you to embark on such a dangerous journey. Uh-huh. As the legend says, if you can manage to reach the mysterious island, riches and glory will be yours for the taking. Be that as it may, the journey to the island is full of untold perils and dangers. It would be nigh impossible for any average person to reach the island. But you are in luck. Allow me to tell you the purpose of our services. It just so happens that our mission as guides is to help visitors avoid danger, find shortcuts, and successfully reach their destination. Um... So, this was all a pitch for your services? Please, there's no need to worry. This was just one point I had to make perfectly clear. Although the legend and the clues to finding the island are known to everyone, the leads left behind by our ancestors are as enigmatic as riddles found on a lost treasure map. Only guides bestowed with the legacy of our ancestors can correctly decipher the clues. Tourists who rashly embark on their own often wind up lost and encounter unnecessary dangers. Huh. He actually sounds pretty convincing. No. But it seems like fate has brought us together. So, what say you to having me as your guide? Uh, so how much will you charge us? Not to worry. I don't intend to charge any fees. So you'd be working for free? For us people of the springs, guiding guests to the mysterious island is a great honor in and of itself. Worth more than any amount of mora. Smooth. Paimon almost wants to believe him. This is all part of his sales pitch. We need to see what he actually wants to do. Alright, thank you. Then please, guide us onward. Of course. Please, follow me. Alright, that's a bit far already. Oh, it's kind of halfway. Already, hmm? are you two here to take pictures with the coalosaurs? Really, can we? Ahem. Huh? Oh, you two must be here to seek insight from Atta, right? Oh. So loud. Openly saying their name in such a manner will only cause them to loathe you. Ah, uh, I apologize for not explaining earlier. As you can see, Atta is the elder Koholosaur. My senior here is responsible to serve. Atta is highly respected among the tribe and is far more knowledgeable than other Koholosaurs. They say that Atta has actually visited the mysterious island before. Therefore, you? we must rely on Otta's insight to know how to get there. Aren't you supposed to really? start taking orders? But how do we do that? Us? Can a Kohoasaurus elder talk? You need only slowly approach Otta. Once Otta has confirmed your scent, they will provide their wise insight. In the language of the Kohoasaurus, of course. But no need to worry. The ability to interpret this language is one of the basic skills required of a guide from the people of the Springs. 
I can understand Atta's instructions and will lead you on the journey ahead. Alright, then let's give it a try! Yeah, but shouldn't have <clears throat> done that before. That'll be 10,000 more up per person. Mm. Huh? Uh, in order for Atta to give us insight, they must recall their past, which can be extremely taxing for a Koholosaur. Cost to maintain their health can be quite high, you know. I'm sorry. Such expenses may arise in the process of finding our way, but as long as we reach the mysterious island, these costs will be quite trivial in the end. There you have it. Paimon knew there was no such thing as a free lunch. Yeah, but... For all he said, wasn't he supposed to have brought other people to the island? Shouldn't he have got the treasure? Uh, just pay up, let's not make him suspicious. Uh, it should also help us get our access. Oh, Paimon has an idea. She bets they've just made up all that stuff about the talking Koholosaur. But if we can get a receipt, that'll be proof that they're scaring tourists. With that kind of evidence, there'll be no doubt they're guilty. <sighs> What's taking them so long? Well, what do you say? I'll even throw in a group photo of you two with Atta. You won't ever find another deal like this. Oh, that's an unexpected bonus. Quick, let's pay the man. Yeah, actually, 10,000 more doesn't sound so expensive, the way we spend Mora around. What that makes you happy, Paimon? Remember, approach them slowly. You don't want to scare Atta. If I approach... Don't worry. I will help interpret Atta's insights. If you approach other Sargons slowly, will they not start attacking me and I won't have to kill them all? No, oh, actually, I do need it. Ah. It's soft by itself. Oh, Atta really didn't try to bite us at all! You can also pose now if you'd like a photo together. Okay! Hmm. <laughs> ah, that makes some noise, but it's hard to tell the meaning. Oh, Atta is already speaking? Let me listen to what they have to say. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. Oh, I see. Could you really get anything from that noise? Of course. Like I said, only a guide like me can understand their language. Let's follow Atta's instructions and proceed to the next area. Here's your group photo. I even packaged it up for free. We could get a receipt for that. No problem at all. Here you go. <laughs> Please come with me. We still have a lot of the chief's more to use. Why don't we keep up the act and gather some more evidence? Good idea. <laughs> Paimon's curious what other tricks these scammers are using. Under Carlos Hannes, you have a clue if there are another. What? These guys are going way too far. He keeps coming up with some far-fetched reasons to make us pay for everything. But with sure, all the evidence we have now, we could bring him straight to the chief and he'd definitely be convicted. But after handing over all that Mora, Paimon kind of wants to see if he'll actually take us to the island or not. You won't hurt to get us some more evidence. Sorry to keep you waiting. After all the clues we've gathered, I've managed to find a shortcut to the island. Yeah, but shouldn't you have been there? Ah, we can see. Huh. There's even different uh, effect there for the icon. And Carlos recommended expedition equipment. Expedition. The call can recommend you purchase. Though they're expensive, the quality doesn't seem as good as it made it out to be.
This is the spot. The trails of sunlight will guide the way. Once you cross the rushing water, the light of the setting sun shall reveal everything. Atta's insights have already pointed us to the destination. It's just on the opposite bank. You mean, we're almost there? Huh. But there wasn't even anything exciting about this journey. As I said before, this is a shortcut. If I took you on some arduous path after all the mora you spent, that would make me look like a good guide, don't you think? Anyway, there's no time to lose. We need to get there before sunset. Why? Is it magical? According to Otter's insights, this is the place. We're here. Uh, you mean the mysterious island? Yes, I've led you to the island just as I promised, which means it's time for me to say goodbye. Hold on! Are you serious? This is supposed to be the island? Then what about the treasure? And look at these wooden signs and artificial lights! Even we can tell it's fake! All that stuff about treasure is just part of the legend. I didn't make any promises about what you'd find. And who says a mysterious island can't look like this? Huh. Since you seem to have dropped the act, then there's no need for us to continue either. We were commissioned by the chief of the people of the Springs to gather evidence of your scamming activities. With these receipts, your scamming days are over. <laughs> You sure? Then what's written on those receipts? Huh. Let's see. Huh? Wait, all the writing has disappeared. I took you all this way just to buy enough time for the handwriting to disappear. Even if you were to go back to the people you paid, you'd only find that they were using fake names, making them impossible to track down. You want to report me for scamming tourists? Then be my guest. I'll just say that I'm being falsely accused. With that settled, I'll be going now. We can beat you up I and say it away. wasn't us. Let's go after it. The same way. It's the chief! What's the chief doing here? dispatched others to secretly trail you. Thanks to you, we can finally convict him of scamming people. Hmm. Convict me? How? They don't have any evidence against me. Even as the chief, you can't just level accusations without any evidence, right? Sorry to say it, but he got us. We lost all the evidence we had. Not to worry. Let's search him first. Hey, what are you doing? Keep your hands off me! Th that's my Mora! Yes, I see the mark. Looks like you already split the Mora before you let them here. What do you mean? The Mora that the Traveler and Paimon were using today were all provided by me. They all have a special mark on them. You... So, there must be an explanation why the Mora that should have been theirs ended up in your hands, right? There are no receipts to prove that any transactions took place, and you yourself just denied that there was a scam. So did you then take the Mora from them by force? Take Mora from others by force?! Oh, that's an even more serious crime than scamming! Uh, you... you... Ugh. All right. Sure, I admit that I coaxed them into spending a few times, but I wouldn't go as far as calling it scamming. We have witnesses standing right here, you know. Fine. Yes, it was all a scam. Woohoo! No wonder you're the 
the chief of the tribe. <sighs> I still don't understand how so many people have been getting duped by them. You need only stop and think for a moment to see through the whole thing. If he claims to be able to find a shortcut to the mysterious island, then why hasn't he just gone there and claimed the treasure for himself? Why even bother guiding others there? That's a good point. Speaking of, have any guides from the people of the springs ever found the treasure of the mysterious island? I can answer this question along with your previous one about how to get there. The answer is actually very simple. There is no shortcut to the island, and most people don't even meet the requirement to ever reach it. If you don't meet this single condition, then even guides from the people of the springs, despite all of their abilities, will find it difficult to overcome the obstacles along the way. Which is exactly why, even though the clues to the mysterious island are open to the public, few have ever made it there. Yeah, so people There's a requirement? There. What is it? Let me ask you something first. What do you think a real journey to the mysterious island should be like? I... Uh, it should probably involve... overcoming a lot of hardships with your companions? Before witnessing some breathtaking sights? Uh, uncovering a really touching story? Oh, and scoring some super cool treasure at the end! And therein lies the key point. Overcoming hardships with your companions. It's said that when the first chief set out to search for the island, the ones who accompanied him were not clients, nor tourists, but his closest friends. The legend also mentioned that only those willing to entrust their lives to one another will be able to reach the island together. Therefore, the requirement to reach the island is journeying with your closest friends, the kind of friends you would trust with your life. So that's the key. So nobody ever had. From what I can see, you and Paimon are exactly those kinds of friends. friends. The kind that would trust them. each other with anything. But unfortunately, neither of you are experienced guides. And if you were to hire someone else, then I'm afraid you could probably never place your lives in the hands of someone you met on a pure monetary basis. That's true. But don't feel discouraged. I believe that this beautiful land that I call my home will not disappoint you. Whether it's remote islands or ancient ruins, I'm sure they can also provide you with plenty of exciting adventures. And let me tell you a secret. The elders once told me that beneath these very ruins lies a way to reach the sky! The yeah, thanks for that. But knowing us, we don't give up so easily, even when a place is supposedly impossible to visit. Oh, I can understand. I won't stop you if you're still interested in finding the island. I just recommend finding a guide first who you could trust with your lives. A guide we could trust with our lives? Oh, who knows when we'll meet someone like that around here? Maybe it won't take as long as you think. Yeah, Paimon has a good feeling about this. Then let's go check out some of the other places first. It appears you've already made up your minds. Then I'll be taking my leave. My assistants will pay you for all your help. Thanks again. Okay, bye-bye! <laughs> And conversation. Yeah, but that's a night. It's gonna stay here like those and not gonna spin it. Hmm. <gasps> ah, it's probably this quest over here. details ah okay I complete that uh so now I have to complete oh damn I have to complete that 
in debt in less than 11 days. Uh, I can, but I, I'm not sure if I'll have time for stream and post it before 11 days. Yeah, I didn't know there would be that prerequisite there. Alright, let's... Um, let's check those other two. Well... Um, yeah, yeah, let's start there. This probably won't take too long as well. Something that matter. <laughs> Master Chevin, she, she she went to gather volcanic crystals, but she's still not back yet. <laughs> I told the guards, but they said they don't have people to spare. Plus, that area is super dangerous with tons of monsters and bad. <laughs> they, they have to finish making preparations before they can try to rescue her. But it'll be too late by then. Don't worry, we'll look for her. You guys, time for more heroics. So, you'll help? Great! I'll just make a quick sketch to show you where the guards went earlier. Master Chevin might have stopped around here. She might have been forced to go near the Umbral Needle. If that's the case, then... Umbral Needle is a bear named the Shadow King. Please, you have to save her! The Pathway Best Dissonance. They changed the name of the place. Between... Translation and and the vice solvers. Oh, hang on, is it part? No, uh, where's the oh, oh, come on, it's right next to another quest. I don't want to start another one by accident. Where did you come from? 
so, so strong. Let's get out of here, boys. Run! Leave the stuff if you want to live. Drop all of All right. Go start the next one. Well, they didn't put up much of a fight. Uh, guess they knew what they were up against. Our reputation has its perks. <sighs> Thank you so this? much. I, I thought so. I wasn't going to make it down this mountain alive. Saved by the traveler. Guess my luck's not too bad today. Okay. Uh, sorry. Let me introduce myself. I'm Chevin, a gem artisan. I'm not usually this lucky, but maybe things are looking up. It makes sense to help. Did she introduce herself? She did, huh? I didn't mean to make her worry. I wasn't planning to be gone longer than two days, tops. But then I discovered a new seam of volcanic crystal near the umbral needle. It's a large deposit and the purity is exceptional. I dug up a whole bunch of it and was getting ready to head back. But the phlogiston within the crystals attracted monsters. I panicked and ran up a narrow path to avoid them. But by the time I was in the clear, I ended up running into those bandits. You showed up in the nick of time. If the situation was so dangerous, why didn't you just drop the crystals and run? I left most of them behind, believe me. I only kept the purest chunk. I have to bring it back no matter what. For Tlasoli and poor little Nechka. Who are they? Ah, right, you wouldn't know. Tlasoli is a former ancient name artisan, and Nechka is her daughter. So she crafts ancient names. Ah, I thought it was an artisan with an ancient name, not somebody that crafted. That's right. Or, well, she used to. Now she just handles regular forging commissions. Why did she stop? Because of her daughter. Poor Nechka contracted an awful illness. And Tlasoli put everything aside to take care of her. Even as Nechka's illness grew worse, Tlasoli never gave up. Like a torch in the night. She was determined to burn bright, even as darkness encroached from all directions. Still, all's well that ends well. Thanks to the doctor's medicine and the great spirit's protection. Nechka's flame was rekindled. Her condition has been slowly improving ever since. She's still weak, of course, and has to recuperate at home. But she's well enough to write letters already. She often writes to Shilonen, apparently. Her dream is to become an ancient names forger, just like her mother. I'm not sure. Her birthday's in a few things. days, so Tlasoli asked me to mm. find a pure volcanic crystal to give her as a present. Mm, so that's why we're out here. No wonder you didn't leave the crystal behind. Yeah, talk about an important chunk of ore! What a nice gift! Paimon hopes it helps her feel better. I'm sure she and her mother appreciate your well wishes. All right, let's head back. I'm sure Emish is worried sick. Actually, why don't Imish. you come with me to visit Tlasoli tomorrow? It's all thanks to you that I managed to bring back the crystal. You deserve a reward for helping us protect something so significant. I just hope it makes Nechka That's happy. right! A good mood makes for a quick recovery! And of course, we wouldn't say no to a little gift. <laughs> Don't worry. Something tells me you'll like this one. But I'll let Flasoli tell you what it is herself. Okay. Don't bring me too close to that guy. Okay, back there. Ah, now it won't start. Yeah, every quest should be like that. Oh, 
You're early. Looking forward to your gift? We just have to visit Tlatsoli uh, and Nechka. That's right. Nechka's been so sick. And Tlatsoli had to give up what she loves. Things might get better, but they could probably still use some cheering up. <laughs> I've already asked someone to swing by and let Tlasoli know we're coming. She's probably made all the necessary preparations. Let's go then. Do you mind watching the story, Mish? I'll be right back. Well, we completely ignored the child that asked us to find her in the first place. Chevin, okay? Don't let her go anywhere dangerous. Mm. <laughs> I think it would be faster to go over the mountain than around mm, not sure okay, there's a quest there as well oh hungry digging tired Does it die falling from this high? Oh, pretty strong. Here we are. Nice house, right? Give me a sec, I'll go knock. Flasoli, open up! They're here! Flasoli? Are you home? Open the door! That's yeah. strange. Huh, the door's locked. But she shouldn't be out at this time of day. But didn't somebody tell us that coming? Hey, Nechka! It's me, Chevin! Oh, Open up, please! Response, need me to break down the door? What if something happened to the two of them? What if Nechka got worse again? Let's not overthink things. They were doing just fine the last time I was here. Nechka was sleeping soundly in her room. Still, I told Tlasoli we were coming. Maybe she had to take Nechka out to get some medicine. Hmm. Hey, what's that over there? Looks like a Tepetlosaur nest. That's right. Tlasoli has a Tepetli sore companion. If I remember right, its name is... Iengu? When she was still in the forging business, she'd often have Iengu help with some digging work. But since Nechka fell ill, she hasn't let it dig much recently. Wait a minute. What the... This place is a mess! Iengu's nowhere to be seen either. Whoa, look at all these broken boxes! Something terrible must have happened! Sure, they haven't noticed that before. Well, let's take a closer look. You stay here, Chef. <laughs> How is it that every single time Imish tells me not to go someplace dangerous, I end up running into danger? It's like her words have some sort of power over me. Maybe it's the Wyab's doing. Oh well, but if that thing is here... The tracks end at this cliff! Could the Tepetlosaur have climbed up the mountain? Let's head up there and see! Yeah, but if this mark was here, it isn't that the Tepetlosaur a... a different shape?
No! That's wrong button. Uh, is that her tippet ah, star? There really is a tippet lasor up here. Might not be Tlasoli's companion though. At least it doesn't seem to be any danger. It's like it got up there on its own. Yeah, what's up? We just got up here uh, on our own. Paimon still doesn't see any sign of Tlasoli. Hey, traveler, Paimon. Looks like there's someone next to her. Come down quick! Tlasoli's here! I think that's the first huh? MC we find. We just got up here and Tlasoli's back already? What a coincidence. Either way, let's go down there. We have quite a coincidence. Uh, why is the Tepetlasaur coming along? Whoa, hey, hey, don't run! You'll hit us! You have to send them out with the Tepetlasaur. Yangu, come here. Are you being naughty again? <sighs> oh, that's a good Saurian. Oh, you must be hungry. Sorry. I'll whip up something for you later. All right, run along and play now. I'll come along in a sec. <sighs> oh, sorry, you two. I was waiting for you at home when Nechka... Well, she snuck out and ran off by herself. She said she just wanted to pick some flowers for our guests. Hmm. So it was our fault. But she ended up getting lost along the way. Luckily, I managed to find her before long. Is she alright? Yeah! Kevin told us she was just starting to get better! She's still very weak. The shock and the cold wind certainly didn't help, so she ended up with a slight fever. I gave her some medicine and now she's in bed. But it's nothing a good night's rest can't fix. That said, she won't be able to meet you today. I'm sorry you came all this way for nothing. Don't worry about it. We know she's still recovering. Chevin told us how serious her illness was. No, she just said it was serious, not her how serious. Her health definitely it comes was. first. We were just dropping by to check on her. I have no idea what she has. Is she all better now? Sounds like she's doing well enough to run off on her own too. Yes, and to run away from eating her vegetables. Hmm. She's a fast one, that's for sure. She jumps over chairs, hides under the table, then runs all around the house. I can hardly catch her. Seeing how she is now. That's already enough. I really couldn't ask for more. Hey, cheer up! This is supposed to be a happy occasion! We do appreciate that she tried to welcome us with flowers. Anyway, Tlasoli, about the thing I was telling you before. The gift? Alright, let's hear it. Yeah, what did you get us? Well, it's a Blaze Gem inscription. I made it from the purest ore, so it's almost completely resistant to erosion. The techniques used to make it are all rooted in ancient name forging. So it's like some version of an ancient name? <laughs> Don't say that or the wild might smite me. The process just uses a few of the same techniques and materials. When I first made one, I didn't think it could serve any practical purpose. Apart from the erosion resistance and the general aesthetic. But then Chevin suggested using the crystals to make a special kind of ornament. Blaze gem inscriptions made by an ancient name artisan. Engraved with words that never fade. Quite the sales pitch, don't you think? Wow, 
That description really does make it seem special. You got good eye for business. No wonder we're on your own star. <laughs> Tlasoli's Blaze Gem inscriptions really are special, though. Word of mouth isn't always reliable. As information gets passed along, it becomes incomplete, forgotten, and sometimes even distorted. But the words inscribed on these crystals will stand the test of time. The inscription will never deteriorate, and the meaning will never get twisted. It's the perfect gift for a dear friend or significant other. You could even pass it down to younger generations. You're really pushing this speech. You're very persuasive. Paimon's interested! Let's buy one, Traveler! We can engrave our names onto it! There we go. One for free, no? A gift? Then, once we find your sister, we can get her to add her name as well! That way, our names will be together forever! <laughs> Looks like Paimon's already been hooked. That sounds a little too precious. You deserve it! You saved me! And Nechka's birthday present! It's the least I can do to repay you. Chevin, I thought I told you. Don't you start acting shy too, Tlasoli. It's a great gift. I know how much work goes into one of your Blaze Gem inscriptions. Well then, thank you both. I'll have it ready as soon as possible. Then, I'll have you do the inscription yourself. Nechka should be well by then. She'll be very excited to meet you. Good things are better in company. Might as well buy a few more gifts as gifts. Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We don't even know how expensive that would be. You sure we have enough travel funds? Hold on, this isn't part of some scheme to make us spend all of our mora, right? Chevin? You never know. You do look like you have some savings to spare. We could resell them. No, don't listen to that, Traveler. You'll end up losing all your mora. <laughs> In any case, it's up to you. Oh, oh no, it's the Tepatlasaur again! Quick, someone stop it! Paimon doesn't want to get run over again! Well, there, there. <sighs> Those are Also, dwarves. if you don't mind, Tlesoli, I'd like you to help me repair my Blaze Gem inscription. I dropped it when I was attacked earlier. The rope and clasp both snapped, so I haven't been wearing it. I tried fixing it myself, but I just couldn't get it to stay. Could you help? Isn't that kind just of leave it to the me. thing you do I'll for make it as good as new as well? Thank you, Chevin, for going all that way and... It was nothing. We all just want Nechka to get better. You're right. Miangu, behave yourself. I'll feed you in just a second. Poor guy. I'll have Chevin contact you once everything's ready, Traveler. Maybe we'll even line it up with Nechka's birthday. We can even have a little party. Oh, that sounds great! We'll look forward to all the good food, and we'll make sure we're ready to eat. Anyway, see you around, Flasoli! There you go. Hope Nechka gets better soon. Look after yourselves. Hey, she's kind of treating Nechka like a pet. Is going to be so happy to meet you. Isn't the Saurian supposed to be more like a family member or something? Shouldn't it be able to go by itself, find food and stuff as well? Here. Uh. Uh, coming soon. All right. Well, the system here. Let's check this one as well. Mm. In here. Mm-hmm. 
help find the baby Saurians? I think I just saw them. And I'm Toba. You must be the helpers that we've been waiting for. Uh, uh it's nice to meet you too, but we're just passing through. Oh, but Uncle Sanka said he was gonna send some of his friends over to help us. You sure he didn't mean you? I'm afraid you don't know anyone called Sanka. Yeah, sorry. Whatever this is about, it sounds like you've got the wrong end of the stick. Wrong end of the stick? Darn it! We've been tricked, Hoonie. I should have known that Glasses Guy was a con artist. What are we supposed to do about the baby Saurians now? Time's running out. It's okay, Hoonie. Don't worry. Why don't you tell us what happened with these baby Saurians, huh? There's been a lot of unrest in the tribe lately, and my dad Saurian got injured. Her name's Nana, and she has three little babies. After what happened to Nana, her babies were so scared that they ran off and hid. I'm really worried about them, so I decided to go look for them. If Nana is your dad Saurian, why isn't he the one looking for them? My dad's one of the elders, so he's busy getting ready for Turnfire Night. It's a really important ceremony. More important than this, anyway. I'm not supposed to be out here either, but I snuck out without telling him. I didn't think it would take very long, but then that guy we ran into made us tell him loads of stories, and it wasted so much time. Yeah, he was so selfish. He doesn't have a heart. It's all right, go let him get to you. We're here now and we'll help you because we care a lot, don't we, Traveler? We sure do. So, are the baby stars nearby? They should be. I already managed to find their tracks and it seems like they're hiding on the cliff. Oh. Uh, leave it to Paimoime. You shouldn't take home. Really? Wow! Thank you so much, Mr. Traveler and Miss Paimon. Awesome! You gotta be careful out on the cliffs, though. They're really steep. Even grown-ups have trouble climbing them. Goody said the baby Saurians are on the cliff, so let's find a way up! Good luck, and stay safe! We'll wait right here. And... Goodbye. So it ain't those. There's no sleeping. Oh, oh, the mountain king. Oh, we will have to fight the mountain king. I'm scared. Pochi. Huh. So we can see the behind of him. And he isn't completely flat. Oh, what the hell is he? Oh. We found them! Wait, but what's that other... A uh, how? Well, 
If it isn't the gruesome twosome who wormed their way into our servant circle of friends. <laughs> Still awestruck from the last time we met? Would that be why you hastily scrambled up here to pay your respects the moment you saw us? <laughs> I suppose we can't blame you. Such is the spell that our majesty casts on our minions. Very well. You heathens leave us no choice. <laughs> the almighty dragon lord, Kahula Hau, shall grant you the audience that you seek. Come, pucker up. You may now kiss our feet. I didn't notice he calls Wait, himself you, like, in the plural before. Sidekick? What the heck are you going on about? You're somehow managing to be even more annoying than the last time we met. Silence! Who are you calling sidekick? We are the Dragon Supreme, sovereign ruler of the Nation of Flame. We shall have you know that last time, were it not for Kanich's earnest pleading on your behalf, you would have received not a single word of mercy. Oh, come on, you talk big, but Kanich clearly has you under lock and key. Oh, great sovereign, what brings you to this mountaintop? So little much, King. Oh, what you doing up here? <laughs> That's great sovereign to you! Mm, you dare invite the wrath of the almighty dragon lord, Kahula How! Mm, you will burn and turn fire for a thousand years for your blasphemy! If you must know, our humble servant begged us to investigate an abyss incident near Hoitzitlan, and we chose to grant his request. Abyss incident? See this little lizard? Its mother, a medium-sized lizard, came under the influence of abyssal power. In her confusion, she attacked my servant's tribe, then assailed her own offspring. Yikes! So how is she doing now? She was but a lowly bug fighting against the power of the abyss. Naturally, she has departed for the Night Kingdom. Oh. <laughs> Such a fragile creature. Apparently, she ended her struggle by leaping from a cliff. Leaping from a cliff? My I dear anemic is... flying ant, as addled with questions as your head may be, please keep them to yourself and wipe that absurd expression off your face. We are the almighty dragon lord, Kahula How, not a wish granting fountain. Anemic! It? You Just you wait. Two can play at the ugly nickname game. Hmm. We sense a faint abyssal energy. <laughs> An evil sorcerer must be lurking nearby, but they are well hidden. If you encounter any suspicious outlanders, be sure to give them a robust interrogation. Suspicious outlanders? Wait, are you mocking us? <laughs> How dare you cast aspersions on your ruler, heathen! You're just lucky that our servant has such vile taste in friends! Otherwise, we would beat you black and blue, and then purple, then black again! <laughs> if you're not here to kiss my feet, then get out of my sight! Do not impede the work of the almighty dragon lord, Kahula How! Hotty mouth on that guy! I'm on his furious! Still? Good to know about the abyss threat, huh? Wasn't expecting that. Ugh, let's not get sidetracked. Oh. Jumping from a cliff. Fine. How did she end her life jumping from a cliff? Have wow, fought you're back out of already? Movie. That was so fast. Uh, I'm so glad that the babies are all right. Thank you both so much. Now we can finally go home and stop worrying about them. You're welcome, Pizza Cake. You're not from Natland, right? Because your clothes look different than ours. Oh. Hey, you must be tired after all that climbing. You should come take a rest at my house. Yeah, please come. I promise you'll get a big scion's at the canopy welcome. 
We love having guests, and you're really nice people. Not like Glasses Guy. By the sound of it, Glasses Guy wasn't from Natland either, right? Uh-huh. Well, his clothes sure weren't. You know what? Now that I think about it, there was something really fishy about him. Really? Maybe he was the suspicious outlander that Ahal mentioned. Could you tell us a little bit more about him? Sure, if you're interested. Oh, let me think. How did the conversation go again? Oh, please, mister. I've told you so many stories already. When are you going to help me find the baby Saurians? Just one more story. One more, I swear. Why don't you tell me more about that ball of fire? I heard that there was a huge transparent ball of fire that used to burn 500 years ago, a thousand years ago, maybe even further back than that. Oh, you mean turn fire. That's where the ancient name Mollipo comes from. Oh, wow. So it was the origin of an ancient name. That's impressive. Uh-huh. There's a story behind every ancient name. The legend goes that the turn fire first appeared in the era of the Grand Alliance. It was used by the tyrant Oj Khan to rule over Natlan and oppress anyone who opposed him. Turn fire is different from normal fire. If you get set on fire with it, you'll feel horrible burning pain from behind you, but you won't die from it right away. And whatever you do, you mustn't turn back to look at it. Why? What happens if you turn back? As soon as you turn around, poof! You get burned to a crisp. Well, good golly gee. I mean, it's one thing to singe someone's clothes, but burning people alive? That is a big no-no in my book. Right? How nasty is it to burn someone from behind and not even let them turn around to look? Oach Khan really was an evil tyrant. Yes, shocking behavior. Now, let me guess. Eventually, a valiant hero came to save the day? That's usually how these stories go. Good guess, Uncle Glasses. Seems like you really know your stuff. The hero was called Yupanki. He's the ancestor of our tribe. Mm-hmm. Yupanki was friends with Och Khan the Tyrant, and also Shibalanke, the first Pyro Archon. He was working as an ordnance officer for the Grand Alliance at the time. He didn't like how Och Khan was such a cruel tyrant, so he stole the Turnfire and threw it at the Och Khan's army. The soldiers couldn't defend against it, and they all got turned to ash. And that's how our ancestors set our people free. But just as he was about to leave the city, he thought he heard Och Khan calling out to him from behind. It caught him off guard, and he turned around to look. But Och Khan wasn't there. All he saw was a city burned black, an army in ruins, and giant flames reaching up into the sky. A split second later, the flames he saw burst out from inside his eyes and swallowed him up. All it took was a single glance. As soon as he looked back, he was burned to a crisp. The question is, was this the price he paid for stealing the turn fire, or the price of turning back? Nobody knows the answer, but the fire that consumed you punky burned more fiercely than any other. It burned for a hundred days until it burned a hole right through the ley lines. Hmm. And then... Find a place? The flame dropped into the deathly dark night kingdom, where it still burns to this day. The grown-ups say that it lights up the path that leads to the next life, but for the dead to be reborn, 
They have to accept the flames and be purified by the fire first. It's like a final look back at your life, where you have to answer for everything you did. Anyway, that's the story of Yuponki's turn fire. Ah, a fine parable indeed. So, is it true? Is it really possible to find this fire in the Night Kingdom? Gotcha, then I, can't I don't write. know. I think it's just a story. Either way, I assume this name has been passed down in your tribe ever since? Sure has. It went to Burkina, the hero that we celebrate on Turnfire Night. But that was 500 years ago. Yeah, and now it belongs to Kanich. So we often call him Malipo Kanich. Ah, uh, so he's fine. Kanich, huh? All right, Uncle Glasses, that's enough stories. Now, can you please go find the baby Saurians for us like you promised? Uh, I would. But doesn't the legend of the turn fire teach us not to look back? Let's not go dredging up the past. Tell me more about this Kinich guy. One more story, I swear. Starting now. No? Careful, Toba. You look dangerously close to cursing me out right now. Tut tut. We can't have that. Cursing is for grown ups only. Uncle, you'd better not be trying to trick us, or the turnfire will get you when you die. How would it get me if I'm outside of Natlan? Uncle Glasses isn't from here, you know. Unlike you. Huh? Wait... Is that...? Uh... Well, I didn't come from here. Alright, kiddos. I'm a man of my word. Two of my friends are on their way here, and uh... Yeah, they'll help you out on my behalf. Work them like dogs, okay? That's what they're here for. Don't go easy on them just for my sake. Really? Well, first, can you tell us your name? We met at the foot of this cliff, so... Beneath the peaks... Let's go with... Sanka. Are we supposed to know? Seriously? If you don't believe me, turn around and see for yourselves. They're right behind you. Huh? Where? Yeah, oh. definitely a fishy oh. character. It sounds like he was digging for info about the ancient names. Yeah, and not only that, but he betrayed us too. He'll pay for this. All he got out of us was some stories, though. What's the worst that could happen? Hmm. Yeah, could have Traveler, had that stuff maybe we should go one. tell Kanich about those this. Secrets. A how says he's investigating it, but he's a bit of a. Loose cannon. We probably shouldn't take him at his word. Huh? You know Kanich? Um, not very well, but we have met him before, and one time we had a meal together. Aw, oh, man. I'm so jealous. I never even spoken to him. He's so cool. He's the Saurian Hunter, and he has a really awesome ancient name. Me neither. I don't think my dad really likes him, though. He always tells me to stay away from him. Probably because of that little creep he always hangs out with. He's nasty, and he's so full of himself. Oh, the creep who calls himself Kahul Ahau? Yeah, we've had the... pleasure of meeting him too. He sure loves pushing people's buttons. Exactly. I don't know why Kenich partnered up with him. Why didn't he pick me instead? Uh oh Pony, look how late it is. We've been out way too long. We better get home now or we'll get yelled at. Oh, yikes. You're right. Okay, well, this path here leads to our settlement. If 
if you decide to visit, remember to come to my house. If there's anything you need, my dad can help get it for you. Hope to see you soon. We gotta run. Bye for now. Okay. Well, there's the X3 at the end, but I suppose we'll finish this. Um, yeah, conclude this Sanka guy story. Uh, those ah uh, the quests ah uh, that's some stuff ah uh, cool very special item no one's a world war due to the reason oh and there's one thing you want me to one day let me a gentle gleam that illuminates the night ah uh, I we had to open another three. Oh, they're cool. They're pretty cool. Ah, uh, I didn't notice there's a new type of weapon here. Hmm. Our treasure compass. Special recipe gift. Mm. Special furnishing. Cool. Hmm. Uh, there. Trinidad. And he is your dad. Okay. Huni, what were you thinking going out by yourself? Don't you know how dangerous it is? It's okay. Toba helped me. And we met some kind strangers who helped us. And. Kind strangers? What made you so sure they were so kind, huh? Oh, I suppose they had kind stranger written on their foreheads? Uh, yeah, actually. In big, bold letters. Don't talk back to me. The Mountain King problem still hasn't been solved. What would I do if I lost you too? No dinner for you tonight. They were good people, no Dad. Dinner, dinner or that's, no dinner. That's not... Hello again, Huni. That's not a punishment you uh, put on a it's child. It's Paimon and Mr. Traveler. Dad, it's them. They're the ones who helped me. And I promised we'd take care of them if they came to visit. Oh, so you're the kind strangers. Well, I'm Trinidad. Apparently, you helped my daughter today, so if there's anything you need, just ask. As an elder of the Scions of the Canopy, I've got some influence around here. Now, I trust that you're sensible people who know better than to take advantage of their host's generosity. We just have to be passing by, so we lend her hey, it was nothing. Of course, all we asked for is one million mora. Yeah, let's see what's his response for to One that. million mora! <laughs> uh, at least you're a straight shooter. I can respect that much. Dad, please! They're not bad people! They've eaten at the same table with Kanich before! Be nice to them! Kanich? Wait! I heard that two mysterious travelers from afar showed up at the Stadium of the Sacred Flame. Are they... you? Well... Uh, the other guy recognizes us from afar. The others... The other tribe heard about us and you don't know. Yes, I'm one of them. And Paimon's the other! Uh... <coughs> uh... I do apologize. A lot's been going on in our tribe lately, and I suppose the pressure must be getting to me. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I was so rude to you. I, I, uh, I feel ashamed. Uh, we got off on the wrong foot. 
Can we, uh, start over? Oh, now we're talking. Seriously, though, don't worry about it. Already forgotten. We're just happy to see Hoonie got home safe and sound. Oh, you just arrived, I take it. And, and it would be my honor to give you a hero's welcome tonight. Careful now. That's quite an about face. We've heard that kind of thing can lead to spontaneous combustion around these parts. <coughs> uh -huh. uh. So do you happy treat me? If you need a favor, let's talk. <laughs> My dear traveler, you are very perceptive indeed. Go inside now, Hooney. Dad's got some important business to discuss. Okay. Look after Mr. Traveler and Miss Paimon. They're very special guests. Well, we'll hear you out, but we can't make any promises that we'll be able to help. <clears throat> well... This is a matter of utmost importance. Please, uh, allow me to explain. For many years, our tribe has celebrated the Turnfire Night. It is a traditional ceremony among the scions of the canopy in which we remember our ancestor, Burkina, and his companion, Kangamato, the Mountain King. Burkina was a hero who bore the ancient name Malipo, and Kangamato was a powerful Yumkasur warrior. Together, they fought against the Abyss. They were victorious, but it came at a great cost. Rakina paid with his life. The Mountain King survived, but was contaminated by the Abyss, and he remains in hibernation to this day. So Normally, Yumkasurs never live longer than a century. It is possible that the Abyssal power is responsible for his unnaturally long lifespan. Wait, so he's still alive? Oh, that's right. The Mountain King is a living symbol of our glory, but even this glory comes at a price. The Abyssal power inside him is highly sensitive, and when it is disturbed, he awakens and flies into a blind rage, attacking anything that moves. So, besides the ceremony, another important part of Turnfire Night each year is cleansing the Abyssal Power inside the Mountain King, so that he will remain sound asleep. So, However, Abyss-related incidents have been on the rise in that land lately, as I'm sure you're both aware. As a result, it has become increasingly difficult to keep the Mountain King in hibernation. Only five months have passed since the last Turnfire Night, and he's already showing signs of instability. Has he woken up again? He has. We managed to contain the situation by performing a makeshift ceremony right away, but it was a close call. He could reawaken at any moment. Also, he attacked and wounded my companion, Nana, during the ceremony. She became contaminated by the Abyss as a result, and... We heard. Such a tragedy. We're really sorry for your loss. Ah, uh, yes, and Nana wasn't the first. Anyway, right now we're preparing for an exceptional Turnfire Night ceremony, and we need to find a suitable flame bearer. From what I've heard about your adventures, I believe you would be perfect for the role. Don't you already have a flame bearer in the tribe? Of course. Plus, he's a bona fide hero who inherited the Malipo name. Oh, you mean Kanich? Yes, he's the one. A hero worth his weight in gold. And unfortunately for us, he's all too aware of that. No prizes for guessing what he said when I asked him to host a Turnfire Night outside of the annual schedule. An exceptional ceremony? Oh, I'll have to charge an exceptional prize. I swear, no other concept exists in that boy's brain. But uh, he's... he charged for the thing, but isn't that... He goes to fight the Abyss for the glory and honor and stuff. Wouldn't he fight that for free? At least it's predictable. Fork over the Mora and he's all yours. Sounds like a professional adventure to me. I'm not the one to usually talk about people behind their backs. 
But I'm convinced the Wyub got hit on the head and took a wrong turn the day it chose to give that ancient name to him. I mean, have you ever heard of a hero whose mantra is, what's your asking price? Oh, and don't get me started on that insufferable a how he hangs around with. <sighs> Thinks he's God's gift to mankind. Pompous fool. Yeah, Paimon has to agree on that last part. <sighs> anyway, the fact is, the ceremony can just as easily be done without him as long as we can find someone else. And besides, you two seem like much better candidates. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think? Just tell me what I need to do next. What's in it for me? Why don't I try to talk to some saints and can each for you? Well, there's only a few days left before the ceremony. We can't afford to waste what little time we have on negotiating with him. No, I much prefer if you would consider taking his place. Wonderful! All I right, can't thank you enough. Mooney was right about you. You have kindness in your hearts. Come with me to the other side of the mountain. I'll bring you up to speed on each step of the ceremony. As experienced warriors, I'm sure you'll pick it up in no time. Yeah, it makes sense when Mount Sikinich, we didn't see the other two. But it seems like we've seen Molan in the last one. Oh, no, he's here. Versus, who dares insult the great Kahul Ahau behind his back? What about the other two? Oh, great Kahul Ahau, bless you. Hmm. Shut your filthy mouth, worm of the abyss. Your putrid words defile the air we breathe. You make the almighty dragon lord, Kahul Ahau, sick to the stomach. Speaking as a member of the Abyss Order, that's music to my ears. Exactly the kind of reaction we're going for. But on a personal level, I gotta say, it's pretty hurtful. Ugh, never have we heard such brazen blustering from someone who was inches from death. Up yours, four eyes! We spit in your face! <laughs> okay, well, that I am at a loss to explain. How do I manage to stay so chirpy and cheerful? I can only guess it's some kind of powerful magic. But I digress. Mr. Kinich, I admit it, you, sir, are a legendary hunter. Still, the only reason you caught me is that I was reluctant to run away. You see, I'm very interested in the lore of your tribe. Okay. Is that it? Kay, aren't you intrigued to know what it is about you guys that prompted a visit from the Abyss? It's the extreme sports! The other day, I narrowly avoided getting hit by a very brave soul who just leaped off a cliff. I think you call it bungee jumping? Anyway, I was very impressed. That is what I call embracing the spirit of adventure. Look. I even did a painting inspired by the bravery and freedom of the scions of the canopy. You scum-sucking swine! Ugh, I swear, if you go bungee jumping, it'll be without a rope! Head first off the tallest cliff, with a band of hunters on your tail, and nowhere left to run! And a bottomless cesspit waiting for you on the ground! You say that, but I get the sense that Mr. Kinich isn't planning to take my life right now. On top of that, I'm tired of spying on you from afar. So why don't we just negotiate a comfortable operating distance that works for both of us? I've heard that the most important thing in human relationships is to respect each other's boundaries. What do you say, Mr. Kinich? Hmm. <laughs> or, you could tell me what it is you're really after. What? And then I'll name my price. Okay. So mm, now we'll fight it here. Yeah, it's something weird that the mountain king is there when the mountains are over here.
So there's probably just another huge Junkasar and not this special one. No, although it is also called. Oh, there's some here. It is also called the Mountain King. I don't think two should have the same. that same title. Here. Uh, the abyss oh. contamination is back. No surprises there. No doubt that explains the Mountain King's recent activity. See those torches over there? Those are the Sacred Flame offshoots that we requested from the Stadium of the Sacred Flame. They contain the power of the Pyro Archon. Are you saying that the Sacred Flame and the Turnfire are the same thing? Well, for ceremonial purposes, at least. Sending someone to the Night Kingdom to retrieve the legendary Turnfire isn't exactly an option. More to the point, though, the Sacred Flame is able to burn away abyssal filth, so that's why we use it in the ceremony. Gotcha! So basically, we just need to clean up the filth with the Sacred Flame. Well, that's one part of it, yes, but the complete ceremony is a bit more complicated than that. First, the flame bearer must collect a kindling of the sacred flame from the starting point, then use a grappling hook to fly up into the sky and light each of the sacred flame pillars. Then, they must go down into the canyon, all the way into the cave where the mountain king slumbers, lighting braziers and the final altar along the way. Okay. The most skilled flame bearers can accomplish all of this without touching the ground once. As much as I hate to admit it, Kanich is capable of this. Wow! He can do all that flying without ever falling to the ground? So can you, Paimon? Well, of course <laughs> Paimon can! It'd be much harder for you guys! <laughs> well, don't worry. It's not a requirement of the ceremony. You're allowed to touch the ground. The only thing you're not allowed to do is turn back. The flame bearer must always keep moving forward. You can't skip a pillar, then come back to it after lighting the next one. To do so would be to disrespect our ancestors. So, what actually happens if you do turn back? Surely the fires don't just go out. Um, well, um, if you're not careful, you might get burned. What about today, then? Does the same rule apply? Oh, no. Don't worry. Today is just a practice. The order doesn't matter. You just need to take the sacred flame, cleanse the filth, then go light all the braziers. Are you ready? Let's begin. I'll repeat all the key points again. Gather the kindling, cleanse the filth, and light all the braziers. I'll wait for you at the end. How exactly does expect us to do that? Because I guess the only Paimon knows we can possess Sargus. Alright, let's use this kindling to complete our mission. There's a bit of filth over there. Let's burn it away with the sacred flame. No. Okay, so... Oh. Hmm. Don't we have to... Yeah, I, I couldn't do that without laning again. Getting that thing. Missile 
Tighten up the place. Overrule. I was right about you. You have outperformed all of the other previous candidates. Hmm. If there was an ancient finish. name for outstanding flame bearers, <laughs> I'm sure the Wyab would consider you for the honor. Well, could probably get the job done too. Yeah, although it would probably take time on quite a bit longer. <laughs> all right, now there's still a few days left until the ceremony. And I should probably get back so I can inform the chief and the other elders that I have found uh -huh. the flame bearer You're we need. An elder. Oh, not you the mean chief. they've still got to sign off on it? Some of them are still hoping we can come to an agreement with Kanich, but that's only because they haven't seen you in action. Still, they still hmm, haven't. I'm the one responsible for securing a flame bearer, and my recommendation is you. Um, just for Paimon's own peace of mind. Are you sure it's not going to be a problem having outlanders take on such an important role in your ceremony? See that place over there? There was a time, long before the age of Burkina and the Mountain King, when we, Scions of the Canopy, called that our home. After a period of upheaval, our ancestors were forced to move away. Now, it has become a place where our youths go to develop courage and kindle a spirit of adventure. If we fail to keep the threat posed by the Mountain King at bay, it might not be long before we have to move again and find a new home. So, to answer your question, I think everyone will agree that you are the right choice. Fair enough. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I'll need you to drop by my place at some point before the ceremony, if that's all right. There are still a few final details that we need to discuss. You have my gratitude. We could just go we be. We helped it out with a with lot of other local festivals before, but this one feels a little different. Anyway, let's take a break before heading back to Trinidad's place. Hmm. Yeah, what did I meet up with the other two? How very shallow of him to spy on me from afar. Um. Uh -huh. Just grab that. Um, no, the thing is here. This one, too. Ah, this one locks in 11 days. Ah, this one locks after the time. So I won't be able to complete them all in one go afterwards. I'll have to do a different stream from this and this one. Damn it. And this one is just coming soon. At any point. Alright. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Next time I play, I'll have to continue with the main quest. Just confirm. It's the one, right? Alright, so next time I have to go do that. Uh, today... I think it's here. I just want to see if the... Um, thing I planted... Last time... Is... Here. Hup. 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 
Oh, there's something there. Hey, didn't we play one? Oh, a pretty flower. Why does it look familiar? Is that the sea turtle that I planted? Ah, that was the sea we infused with Flockstone back then. Paimon didn't realize it was an uh, Embercore flower sea. Ah, we infused with Flockstone back then. Paimon didn't realize. Uh, that, um, no wonder it didn't sprout before. There still wasn't enough Flockstone in it. Oh. See, Turtle Dial, this is the flower you planted. Uh, the seed didn't die. If anything, it's blooming super nicely. I'm surprised it wasn't a whopper flower. Stop being so hung up about that. Mm -hmm. uh, you're really hap real happy, huh, Turtle Dial? Now, you better make sure to become big, strong, awesome Saurian, just like the seed became a flower, alright? Uh. Ember for flower. We keep it. Nice. Uh. No. We don't. It's just. Hang on, where's. Ah. Uh. A strange flower that can be found all over the plains and highlands. Nature buds will bloom after being hit. Wait. Flaming flower. Uh, the ones I explode. Oh no. Ah, uh, I didn't find one of those before. I... Where did I find those? Uh, maybe around here where there's lava and I haven't really explored this area. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, okay, I... Well... Mm. Day isn't too bad, so let's continue with Staring that. into my eyes. Is... <sighs> yeah, but I, I can't promise. actually look at those things. I should have paid a tiny bit of attention to realize I'll get a Molani here. So I should have saved those free ones, free wishes for for one side out of you see. this banner. Uh, that was it. Just the one. Like sprouting seed. All right. So yeah. I guess that'll be it for today, and I'll have to rush the next act before the end of next week. Alright, I'm off.